My name is Ned, and yesterday I released a video on Microsoft Power BI showing you how you can save, edit, and delete data from a Microsoft Power BI dashboard. And I'll link that video playlist down below in the video description. However, many of you wanted more. Max was asking if I could edit multiple values. Richard was asking if I could use it to update pre-existing data on a report. And Zubin was asking if I could do multiple records right back at once using a submit all button. The answer is essentially yes to all of the above, although Max, I'm not going to be showing you how to do spreadsheet editing like uh, capabilities in this video. Even the one comment that I didn't mention asking about, can you write back to Databricks? The answer is, well, I haven't tried, but probably because user data functions, which are behind the subject that we're talking about today, which are translitical task flows are just Python. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how this dashboard works. Now, what this dashboard is, is it's a bunch of source data uh, right over here. And I've brought kind of the primary ID of that source data, and this is product primary master data, um, into a slicer. It allows you to select multiple products and then enter in a new price. So for example, in this case, $40, and then save it and it'll go through and it will update the price for all of those products. Now this is a Power BI report that's been built on top of a semantic model linked to a SQL DB. So in theory, the semantic model should be live and should reflect my changes right away. However, the Microsoft Fabric SQL database and translatical functions are in preview features. So with this update, what you'll see is that the update went through. I'll have a notification up here that the request was submitted successfully, but the prices haven't changed until I go through and I hit this little refresh button just a few times. And there you see it picked up on the updated data. I'm not totally sure why this is happening, but it's not quite as instant as I would expect. But as you can see, I can go through, select multiple products, enter in a new price, of $60 right here, and then update the price and save it. So how is this working? Well, let me show you. But first, if you're not subscribed to the channel and you like business intelligence, in particular Microsoft Fabric, which is what I'm making an increasing number of videos on, and Microsoft Power BI, please consider subscribing and liking the video now. It really helps the channel. Uh, my first goal with the channel is to get monetized. We hit that last night. So I'm really happy about that. I had to set a new goal and my new goal is 5,000 subscribers. So if you could subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. All right, let's jump in and let's take a look at how this is working. We're gonna start with the Power BI report because I think that's what most people are the most familiar with. So as you can see, again, it's connected live to my SQL database via that database's semantic model. Then I essentially just have one, two, three, four visuals, uh, you know, five, six, if you count the, the icons up here. The first visual, if we go and we look at this, is the uh, new list slicer, which is what's compatible with these actions and it returns a list. The next uh, item is the new text slicer. Then finally we have a button and then we just have a simple table over here. Now this button has an action and that action has been set to a UDF or a user data function. And it's calling that user data function right here. It's saying, hey, refresh the report when you've run successfully to pick up on new data, which we just show, saw it's not exactly doing. So that might be a little bit of a bug. Then it's passing the list. So step one as a variable called table array and then the price from the new list price. So that's it. That's all the Power BI report is. The next piece in the tech stack that we want to look at is, well, the table where the product data is stored because that's what we're updating. So I have SSMS open on my computer. Let's take a look. So I'm logged into my SQL endpoint and actually funny thing about Microsoft Fabric, when you log into your SQL endpoint, you can actually see all of the individual data warehouses or databases as if they're all one database on a single server. I don't totally understand the tech behind that, but 
I think it has to do with the one lake piece, but just really cool side note. But anyway, here's the SQL database that these reports are reading and writing from. And here is that product dim table. As you can see, it's just a product table, nothing special. Although I did load this data with a Gen 2 Microsoft Fabric data flow and it added this weird comment in here. I haven't actually seen this pop up before when I've used these. So I'm a little curious what that is, but I decided just to ignore that for the purposes of this video. Hopefully though, you can see this is just a standard Microsoft SQL table, which then just leaves us with the final piece, the Python code that is taking the data from the Microsoft Power BI report and writing it to this table. So let's take a look at that Python code. And here we are. As you can see, I have added my SQL database as a connection. So I've set an alias right here as SQL DB. And then I have a function and that function is the one that I was calling, which is update price. I'm opening a connection to the SQL database, creating a new cursor, setting a new price of zero. I'm then trying to convert the price to an int. Now, side note, if I had been wanting to spend more time on my Power BI dashboard, I probably could have used a what if parameter and actually given it an int in the first place, but I was being lazy. So here I have a try where it's trying to convert it to an int and then throwing an error saying, hey, please per, you know, enter in an integer if you don't do that. Then I am looping through my list. So in Python, this is called a for loop and a for loop essentially runs for every single item in an array or a list. So I said for every product in table array. And in this case, I just declared this variable basically as product. I'm saying, hey, set a thuple right here, uh, update data, pass it in. And here's my SQL update statement. So update uh, product dim set list price equal to new price. So whatever we set up here, wherever product ID is right here. Now, if I was getting really fancy and wanted to be probably a little less compute heavy, I probably could have configured this. So this is just like an in instead of executing a SQL statement, every single record to do this update. But this is just the way I built this. So I'm doing that execution and then I'm committing and then I'm closing the connection and returning, hey, product pricing is updated. So there you have it. You guys asked and I delivered. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was pretty quick, but informative. And if you did, please consider subscribing, liking, leaving a comment, and I will link the Python code down below in the video description in case you want that. But anyway, I hope you have a good night. Talk to you later.